Thank you, Sharon, so much for such a compelling speech and contributing to the panel on the discussion on climate change and health equity. I wanted to start with a question that's going to, going to focus a little bit about your own personal narrative. And in particular, I wanted to find, find out how you went from designing an electronic nose that could smell a beer to Professor of Health Equity. Yes. Um, so the electronic nose was making use of my uh, original training, which was as an applied chemist. Uh, and within that, there was you know, sort of quantitative skills. And then I moved country. So I was doing that in England. I moved country to Ireland, uh, where I got a, a job as a, a data coordinator for the National Nutrition Surveillance Centre. So really, the connection was uh, in, in moving into health was using my quantitative skills. I retrained in uh, epidemiology, public health, and really found my love, uh, professional love, um, for public health and health inequities, originally to do with food and nutrition, but then uh, just more, more generally. And really, at that point, starting to think about you know, what was it, as an academic, I've always been an academic, what was it that really made me passionate I come from a part of Glasgow in Scotland where men die, used to die around about the age of 54 years, uh, about 30 years younger than another part of Glasgow. And that always struck me as being, there was something very unfair about that. So kind of com combining that, I suppose, personal experience back at home with now the tools within public health to think about some of the issues that were contributing to that, I found my, my love for it uh, and all of my research, all of my policy related work has always been about how do we try and address some of the, how do we understand and then how do we try and address some of those societal level drivers that affect people's health. Mm. And that's really mm. what brought me to, to this. Yeah, I, I wanted to, to start with narrative because I think climate change is one of those uh, intensely personal issues where every, everyone has a stake, everyone has a story it impacts everyone in some kind of way. And so I'm curious as to your opinion and uh, your analysis of why, when this is something that is so universal, we've failed so much to achieve any kind of political consensus on a high level. Uh, because I think there are so many vested interests in it. Uh, this, to do something about climate change and health, or you know, just to do something about climate change, really does mean a, a shift in power. Uh, it really means that those people who benefit from uh, the generation of industries and products and practices that contribute to climate change uh, will have to do it differently. Uh, there are billions of dollars at stake for those people and so there is no surprise whatsoever why uh, very little is being done to address it because it means taking on the, uh, the corporate end of town. So that kind of speaks to that need to reorient our, the kind of incentives that are around uh, our, our economy. There's been a recent book written called Donut Economics, which talks about the need to, for us to live in this space in between human deprivation and ecological destruction. So there's a sweet spot mm. that we have to live within. Um, do we need a fundamental restructuring of how we live and how we consume and how we measure what is growth and prosperity? Yeah, yeah. Well, why, what, you know, why when you watch the seven o'clock news on the ABC at night and you, know, you always end the, the news with you know, the measure of GDP or the movement of currency, why is that the measure of how we're doing as a society? Uh, so yes, uh, I would like us to think about what's a, an indicator of good societal progress. Why is it we're not looking at the tracking down of our uh, greenhouse gas emissions, for example? Wouldn't that be a lovely thing to be able to celebrate? Um, but it's not, it's not about throwing out the whole of our you know, global capitalism uh, as we know it. I mean, of course, some people would like us to do that. But if we say, look, we are living in a consumptogenic world. Yeah, everything about the setup of the system is driving us to consume, driving industries to produce more, driving us as consumers to consume more. And you've got this vicious cycle. Then we do need to bring some checks and balances into to that, so might we regulate capitalism a little bit better, for example? Um, 
And there are some really progressive industries out there. We were talking about solar a little while ago, some of you know, the electric cars. So there's companies, big, big international companies are on the front foot. They know that, of course, it's good for their bottom line. Ultimately, that's what they're about. Uh, but it, they recognise that we live within a particular, you know, within the donut. We have to live within the donut. Um, because because they're enlightened in terms of uh, concern about uh, humanity as we know it. So there are these, I think, change agents already in place within the, the corporate world. And it's how we, as a society, how can we um, just increase um, more of that uh, would be a fantastic thing for us. And I know this is going to be part of the workshop that you give uh, after this interview, but what uh, do you have any do you have a call to action for all of the young people that were in the audience and who are interested in perhaps engaging in this space going forward? Yes, so the collective, the collective action. Think about how we frame, you know, a concern is about bringing climate change and health together. Is health a good frame to get people motivated? Uh, is it about how do we measure success of society? You know, what, what does that look like? So let's think about how we frame these issues. Uh, let's get organised as a collective. Uh, the strength, I think, the strength of youth movements uh, is the passion increasingly uh, being at the table. You know, if you think of in the, the Paris discussions, for example, you know, there was such a strong uh, youth voice uh, in there, which was fantastic. Could have been better, but that was fantastic. And so they are saying, you know, think about the future generations. Uh, so being there and don't be you know, really not to be overwhelmed by the complexity. All of this its one bite sized chunk as part of that whole framework, but one bite sized chunk together with others. Uh, trying to do it on your own is just a recipe for poor mental health. Uh, so you can do this as a collective. Thanks for an inspiring call to action. Thank you for joining us at the Global Ideas Forum 2017. Thank you.